Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to another episode of the Remarkable Coach Podcast. As always, I am your host, Michael Pacheco. And joining me today, I have Harlan Hammock. Uh, coach Harlan is a business and leadership coach, author, speaker, and host of the Courage to Lead podcast. Uh, he helps business owners turn common sense into common practice by simplifying, strategizing, and systematizing their business. Coach Harlan, can I call you Harlan? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> welcome, uh, welcome to the Remarkable Coach. I appreciate you making time to chat with me today. Yeah, no, I've been looking forward to the conversation. Thanks. Awesome, man. Um, I always like to kick off this podcast by simply in inviting uh, my guest to just tell us a little bit more about yourself in your own words and why it is you do what you do. Um, I was a management consultant for about 25 years, organizational change management. So working with companies that were undergoing some major change working with the leadership team to help them kind of get their minds wrapped around the impacts that change we're going to have on their business, help them communicate that change to the employees and then help them lead their employees through the change. So they were as productive after as they were before. That was really the goal is to make sure the employees were productive, but that meant getting on a plane every Monday and Friday, flying out to the client site and home, right? We'd fly home, do laundry, fly back out to the client site and stuff. And after 25 years, it was kind of like riding the bus. You see yeah. the same people on the on the bus every day. You see the same people at the airport and on the plane. And I told my wife, I, I'm tired of riding the bus and I kind of want to do something different. And mm -hmm. she goes, well, what are you going to do? Because you can't just sit around, right? It's like, well, I, I want to work with companies. I like working with the leadership team. So I'm going to coach and help these small to mid-sized businesses Um do a lot of things that I was helping the bigger companies do, right? Be better decision makers, better communicators, and uh, be more courageous leaders. And uh, so that's what I've been doing for about the last, what, eight years, I guess, seven, eight years, uh, working with local businesses, helping them to to be better and just loving it. Loving seeing the lights come on in their eyes, love helping them uh, actually define and put their their goals into um, words yeah. and, and that vision and then helping them achieve that. I love it. I'm always curious to know, I think everyone's got a slightly different definition or a slightly different delineation between consulting and coaching. So I'm always curious to know, like, what is, what is your, where's, where's the line of demarcation between yeah. consulting and coaching and why, why did you make that switch and, and has it, you know, you, you didn't want to ride the bus anymore. Have you achieved that in your life? Absolutely. Yeah. It's a good question to, to me, uh, Consultant is somebody that's brought in that has more knowledge about a certain area of business than you do, mm -hmm. right? They're coming in telling you how to do this piece or how to do it well. Mm -hmm. As a coach, I understand, I don't like, I'm working with one guy right now who's a commercial electrician. I don't know anything about electricity. If I flip the switch and the lights come on, I'm good, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm not trying to tell him how to do his business. Mm -hmm. I'm telling him how to be more efficient in what he's doing. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at his business processes, tightening those up building the structure so he has team leads that he can delegate to, to free up his time to do more. Um, so that, to me, that's the delineation between a, a consultant and a coach. A consultant comes in and tells you what to do, mm -hmm. gives you a big ticket for it. Um, where a coach, I ask a lot more questions and try to guide them. Usually usually the, the clients know what they should be doing. They need some encouragement and some accountability to get it done. And so that's what I do is help clarify things for them and then give them the, the uh, accountability to make sure they get it done. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Um, so yeah. So uh, circling back to the second part of that question, you wanted to, you got tired of riding the bus. How, how have things changed for you since becoming a coach and have you, were you able to, you know, I guess now post COVID, right? Nobody's flying on planes anymore to the client site. Everything is happening over zoom and, and digitally. So um, yeah. Did you get to where you were trying to go? And yeah, absolutely. I, you know, not not getting on the plane every Monday and Friday is great because we were around home. We got to do things with family and friends. Got to experience a lot of things and uh, got to do a lot more networking because I wasn't out of town all the time. Mm -hmm. um, everything I was doing a lot of work online, so that transition after the pandemic and stuff was easy for me. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of stuff over Zoom and phone calls and everything like that. Um, and, uh, I was telling you before we got on the call, my wife and I are digital nomads now, yeah. since we both do everything online, we thought, why are we sitting here in Atlanta when we could be doing this from anywhere? Yeah. Um, so we sold off stuff, put things in storage, hopped in our Jeep, and we've been touring around the U S 
I love it. I love you. You're doing that in a in a, in an SUV, not in a not in a big Winnebago no, just, thing. <laughs> no, just Airbnb. It's funny because my niece and nephew are twenty somethings and they're traveling. They're roaming on the West yeah. Coast, um, but nobody ever asks them if they have an RV. I have a couple gray hairs, and everybody goes, "Oh, you must be in an RV." It's like, no, we. Uh, number one, I would love it, but it, it wouldn't work for us because my wife and I are both online yeah. having conference calls and my podcasts. I'm running and. There's not enough separation in an RV, uh, sure. not one that we could drive comfortably. Um, so we're staying in Airbnb properties and they're all set up with us. So we also have to take with us are basically our clothes and our computers Love and that. we're gone. And yeah. so we go from city to city. We spend about a month in each place and just, just loving it. We've been doing it for about 15, 15 months now. What's your uh, totally unrelated to, to coaching, but what's your favorite, what's your favorite city uh, in the last 15 months that you've been to? Wow. Um, I loved Asheville. Okay, Ash that was that was Asheville yeah. was great. Yeah. Um, Las Cruces, New Mexico. I like the Southwest. So uh -huh. Las Cruces, New Mexico, Santa Fe, New Mexico is gorgeous. Yeah. Um, yeah. We stayed in a cave up in uh, Farmington, New Mexico. Um, <laughs> we stayed in a cave overnight. It was kind of fun. You know, something awesome. different to do. I, I'm assuming you didn't have to pay Airbnb for that. <laughs> no, that one we did. It was set up. You wouldn't believe it. It was gorgeous and it was so comfortable and everything like that. But you drive up on top of a mountain and then you hike down to the uh -huh. entrance and you have a big glass sliding glass door. And the guy that owned it was a geologist. And yeah. I guess that he was setting it up as his office and mm -hmm. it never quite worked for his office. So they converted it into a full bed and breakfast basically. And uh, I mean, you had a kitchen, we had a full, you know, bathroom and shower and king size bed and it was just comfortable. And yeah, it's awesome. That sounds, that sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. Um, super cool. All right. I'll get us back on track here. Um, <laughs> tell us, tell us more about your clients. Who exactly are your clients today? Um, most of my clients are skilled trades. So I do a lot with builders and roofers, cool. uh, plumbers, electricians, things like that. Those are the, the, the blue collar folks is they technically are great at what they do, but not all of them know how to run a business. A lot of them acquired a business and they're running it the way that their family member did before them, or they bought a business and they're <laughs> running everything the way that the previous owner did. And it's like, you're leaving so much on the table and you're not really taking advantage of your, you know, your, your, uh, the SWOT analysis, your strengths and, and, and the opportunities that are available to you. Mm -hmm. They're, they're not making enough of that. So I try to get in with them and help them put in some structure, um, help them build their teams, uh, define exactly what their uh, core values are and what their their goal is that they want to achieve, and then help them, you know, uh, implement that that vision. Mm -hmm. Nice, very good. Where do you uh, where do you get your clients these days? How do you how do you market your services? Um, all over social media, absolutely. Yeah. I'll doing a lot of networking and then referrals. Uh, referrals are huge. People don't understand how much you know. People like coaches really refer. Or, or rely on referrals. Mm -hmm. um, so referrals are really important. And uh, yeah, just getting out there and trying to do the, the best I can. Yep. Nice. How do you, uh, tell us about your referral process. How do you go about, because I think, I talk, to, I talk to a lot of coaches, obviously. And I think that, you know, some of them, especially newer ones, will just assume, you know, if, you, if, you, if I'm doing a good job, I'll get referrals. But that's not quite how it works, is it? Yeah. It would be nice if, if that's the way it worked. Um, but no, um, you have to ask. You have to, people don't think about referring. I, you know, it's, it's weird because I was in a networking group and I had a couple of people come up to me and say, I have no idea how to refer you uh -huh. because they felt that it was like telling your best friend, hey, here's a, a marriage counselor. Like, I don't need a marriage counselor, right? If you tell them, hey, here's a business coach I want to introduce you to. It's like, what's the matter with my business? My business is fine. Yeah. So I tried to tell them, don't, don't try to sell me. Just listen to them. If they say, yeah, I'm, I seem to be working a lot and spinning my wheels. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Okay, well, here's somebody I'd like to introduce you to. You know, uh, if they say, yeah, we've just got a brand new project and I don't know how we're going to do it. I don't think I have the employees. Here's somebody I could introduce you to. Just listen to what they're going through and any issues with their people, their processes, their technology they're using. Just introduce me. Let me talk to them and find out what they're doing and stuff. And uh, it's it made it a little, a little bit easier, but it's still, it's not always easy to refer a coach. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, what, what then, what does the conversation look like once you, um, you know, once you, once that introduction is made, what does that conversation look like on, on your end? Basically it's just, I'm a curious person to begin with. So yeah. I love asking questions. Um, yeah. so I'll talk to them about their business. How long have they been in business? How, what are they doing? How do they, who do they serve? How do they serve them? 
Mm -hmm. uh, what are the products and services, everything like that. And I'm just listening for, you know, some, some key words that they may say where, you know, they say, yeah, we did really well last year. It's like, did you do as good as you thought you were going to do? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe not. Right. So you're listening to those type of things to try to get in there, but it's really just kind of understanding what it is they do and who they serve. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not, are there are a lot of franchise uh, business coaches that have like a 19 step program. You have to go through all 19 steps when you work with them. Well, if you're struggling with step number 10, oh, we can't get there yet. We're still on step number four and you have to wait. I go in and try to help them solve their immediate need right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. The rest of the stuff we can get to, but what, where are you bleeding right now? Let's start that, the triage, right? How can we fix what you're dealing with right now? If I can get everything back kind of in line, then we'll work on the rest of the stuff. But right now, let's fix that one thing. It could be uh, attracting and hiring great employees or retaining yeah. great employees. It could be finding maybe new uh, revenue streams that they haven't considered. You know, maybe they're, they're trying to do something they've never done before because their uh, competitor was doing it. Mm -hmm. Come back to your core. Let's work on this and build this up. So I'm trying to help them find that, that one thing that we can get back in line, tune it up a little bit. And then once that's working, then we'll get to the rest of it. I love that. Yeah, I think that's I think that's super important um, to be able to uh, directly address the the issue that any client is like having specifically. I know there's a uh, Mike Michalowicz has a book called Fix This Next, right? Absolutely. And it's and it's a pyramid. And if if your problem is here, this is what you focus on, and it's you know the thing the thing right below it. Um, mm -hmm. And that's so important. Yeah, not to get bogged down in frameworks or or mm -hmm. something like that, right? Right. I mean, you want to get to all of that because everything is important, right? Even in McCallum's uh, business hierarchy of needs, sales, profit, right? The organization, all those things are important, but find out what is really hurting you right now. Let's yeah. get that fixed. And then we'll look at the rest of the stuff. So I try to get that one thing rolling to where they're a little more comfortable with it. If it's a, a quick, easy hit, I can show them this is what I can do because I'm drawing from 25 years of experience in sure. pharmaceutical, manufacturing, aircraft, manufacturing, all these things. So I have different toolboxes that I can draw from. Mm -hmm. I want to show them we can get this quick hit. And then once we get that going now, let's look at everything else and we'll get it working. Yeah. Nice. What is a, what does a typical engagement with you look like? Hmm. Well, we usually get together either weekly or biweekly. Mm -hmm. um, more often it's one-to-one -one, me with the business owner, uh, the leader of the business. I'm working with him to try to get that or him or her to get that, uh, get them more confident in what they're doing and, and help them be better leaders. Mm -hmm. I will work with the leadership team. I'm working with one guy who uh, just purchased the company a couple of years ago. Um, we're putting his leadership team in, delegating things to them so that now uh, the boss is the visionary and he's mm -hmm. dealing with these folks at this level rather than working with all the 25 employees or so. Mm -hmm. um, so give them some structure. So we'll get together about every week or every other week. We'll talk about you know, here are the goals you had. How did you do on these goals? What worked? What didn't work? What could we try differently? And then what are your goals for this upcoming week? Mm -hmm. Quarterly, we'll get together and put together, here's our, our big rocks, the things we want to accomplish this quarter. And then weekly, we're looking at their goals and holding them accountable to achieving mm -hmm. those goals. Um, one client I love to brag about, I started working with him back in 2019. He was the operations manager of a commercial electrical uh, concern. He was frustrated because the owner didn't want to put any more money into the business, didn't want to grow the business. He knew that they could be so much bigger. And uh, so I told him, well, you can either start your own business in direct competition with this guy, or you can buy him out. <laughs> and so he ended up buying the company. Nice. And now he's the boss. Uh, we started working in 2019. They were doing about 750, 800,000 annual revenue, you yeah. know, small. Last year, we closed at 5.2 million. We did that by focusing on his AR collections, uh, mm -hmm. focusing on his pricing and his profit margins. Uh, he built his team, he built his customer base. We started putting processes in place. So kind of like recipes, right? If you do this, you're going to get X and uh, just put the, the solid foundation in his business. And so now he can scale and grow and you know. uh, having a lot of fun. Yeah, it's great. I love it. I love it. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned quarterly rocks. Do you, are you using EOS uh, entrepreneur operating system with your clients? We are. Yeah. We are. Um, I'm not certified in EOS um, and I don't want anybody to think I am, but I love the books. Gino Wickman is phenomenal with the stuff he's come up with. And a lot of the pieces are pieces that I've used in my coaching. So it was easy to transition over to that. Mm -hmm. But I think EOS is such a great system because it does put all those structures in place. Um, we have the 
the the meetings, the weekly meetings where we're going through and we identify, uh, discuss, and then so solve the yep. problems that they're having and stuff. So you really see those meetings starting to tighten up. And uh, yeah, they've come a long way since. In fact, he says if if we hadn't introduced EOS, that he wasn't sure that we'd be where we are now. It's a phenomenal yeah. system. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, we've uh, we've used it at Boxer for the last three years, um, and it's been it's been a game changer, especially in terms of just making sure that everyone on the team is rowing in the same direction, right? And just kind of we're all. Every quarter you pick your rocks, you make sure that everything's focused, everything's working together, um, and that you're all working towards, you know, a greater good and everyone's, whatever your rock is or your rock is or your rock is, it's all kind of focused on on one thing. And then, you know, three months later, you're looking at it and you're like, we've, this is, this is some legitimate process, progress. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The alignment is key. Um, even in the consulting, that's one of the first things we do is look at the leadership team. Are they aligned? Yeah. Do they all agree on the same goal? Or are they all headed in the same direction? Because too often the the CEO thinks, I said this is where we're going and everybody's following me. But then you talk to the individual VPs and 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 they're all pointing in different directions, you know, which is pulling resources and, and time and effort. It's like you have to have that alignment. EOS brings that in where you yeah. really talk about it, you really set out those goals and it's helped with the employees too, using that people analyzer, you know, to make sure the the employees understand these are our core values and everybody's being held accountable to, you know, holding these core values and they do. And it's, it's working. Yeah. It's a great system. I love it. I love it. You mentioned, so you see, so you said you love, you love Gina Wickman stuff. Um, I couldn't agree more. You also, I, you were an author as well. Is, do you have yeah. a, do you have a book that you want to pitch? <laughs> Now's your chance. Um, now's a chance. Um, I have two books. The first one is, is okay. It was put out when I was first, or I think before I became a coach, I'm a private pilot. So I use a lot of flight analogies when I'm talking to my clients and stuff. So the first book I have is called Flight Planning, A Pilot's Guide to Business Success. Yeah. Um, and it's all about the flight plan. Where are you now? Where do you want to be? How do you plan to get there? And how are you going to measure your progress, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just like I file a flight plan. The second book is called Barnstorming, A Pilot's Guide to Growing Your Business. The barnstormers would you know, come into town, they would do some crazy things to try to draw people to them, enhancing their skills, you know, forming teams to do these different things. All these things that we as entrepreneurs need to do to kind of build our business. So that's what I use as kind of the foundation is all the stories about the barnstormers and some of the crazy things they, they used to get up to. That's super cool. I um, did my discovery flight in January or December. Um, and, uh, Man, I didn't think that they were going to hand over the controls on that first flight, but I know. boy, what a rush. Oh man, it was in, yeah, you know, in the typical in a little Cessna, um, mm -hmm. but it was, it was fantastic. Um, I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm, when he, the pilot says you have the controls, it's like, what? Uh, yeah. You know, I'm backing away. He said, no, 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 come on, take fly us that way. Yeah. And yeah, I, I loved it. Loved yeah. it. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was super cool. Um, very nice. Very nice. Tell us about some, uh, some big wins that you've had as a coach. The biggest probably is, uh, that electrical contractor I was talking about. Yeah. I said, taking them from the 750 up to 5.2 million and they're on track to hit that or, or more this coming year, just doing a phenomenal job. Um, I love working with the employees that kind of know that they're they're they need something, right? Yeah. You talk to some businesses and it's like, hey, I got where I am without you. Why do I need you? I want to work with the people that are hungry. That is like something's not working. I'm not sure what it is. Can you help me? Um, I was working with one lady who is a, a bookkeeper and she started off working from her home. And she had a couple employees and things like that, but they were small and they stayed small. And I kept asking, are you getting out and buying, you know, getting more clients and things? She said, no, I, I can't because I don't think that they understand how to do what I do. It's mm -hmm. like, well, have you taught them, you know, teach them what it is you do that frees you up to go do this stuff. And when she did, her employees were just like, oh, thank God, that, you know, you, you're teaching us how to do this. We wanted to learn how to do this from you all the time. Yeah. She taught them how to do it, the um, forensic type accounting, so they could dig in and find out, you know, how the business worked and everything like that. Now she's got uh, several more employees working for her. She's doubled the size of, of her client base. They moved into a brand new big office space and they're just thriving. But it, it's that accountability. What is it you're going to do? And have you done it? And I'll call up and text them every once in a while. Have you done this yet? How did that go? You yeah. know, just to make sure that they're getting those things done. 
But like I said, on the big consulting projects I used to be on, we never really got to the very end of the project. We would have to teach the clients how to do the things we were doing. And then we back into the shadows, let them kind of take it from there. So we never got to see everything come to fruition. Here, I'm sitting side by side with these people and I'm seeing the light bulbs come on and I'm seeing them make the decisions and I'm seeing how it's improving their business. And it's exciting. Yeah, that seems to be a, a pretty typical story. Even criticism about consulting is that consultants will will come in, you know, charge you a ridiculous fee, give you some instructions, and then and then as fast as they can walk out the door. Um, whereas whereas a coach will, you know, tends to stick around and, and like you said, just kind of guide you through through the stuff. And it's not uh, it's not so much instructional as it is guidance. Yeah, definitely guidance. And, you know, sitting next to them, watching them, listening to the decisions they make and calling them off the side and say, hey, do you think that was the best? You know, how else could you have done that? You know, yeah. Um, yeah. And just there for everything, you know, the the highs and the lows and try to walk them through it. Nice. What sort of things, um, what sort of things did you struggle with as a coach? When you, when maybe when you first, you know, when you, when you, when you first made that switch from consulting over to coaching, were there, you know, were there any things that you that you struggled with in, in that transition? And Yeah, that was one of the hardest transitions was because uh, a lot of the stuff we did, there was training involved. So uh -huh. I would teach the client how to do the different things we were doing, communication plans and all this other stuff. Um, coming in and being a coach, I wanted to dig in and help. It's uh -huh. like, no, 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 I'm here to ask questions. I'm here to, you know, coach you, <laughs> make you a better person, not show you everything that I know. Uh -huh. So that was difficult. I would, I would slip into more, you know, teaching and training yeah. than just coaching. So that yeah. was tough. Um, understanding how social media worked, you know, I never really had to use it before. So except, you know, communicating on Facebook or something like that with family and friends, but getting out there and actually putting out posts that meant something uh -huh. and, and trying to understand what the client was looking for and, and, you know, Love feed that. them information that way. It's yeah, that was kind of a tough transition, a long learning process. I imagine, um, well, a couple things there. I definitely, what you said about like figuring out social media and and what you know your your prospects, your ideal clients are are looking for and solving their problems. I I just posted last week um, some social media posts myself with tips and tricks on how to do that effectively because I think I do think it's so important to actually deliver value in social media and not just, you know, value the buzzword, right? right. Forget the fluff, man. Nobody cares. We've all seen it before. Right. Like yeah. actually solve a problem. Like actually actually help somebody. I think that's so important and there's there's a lot of people out there that are not um I think they're not I don't know if either they don't totally, they don't really understand what their ideal client is looking for, or they're just not thinking hard enough about it. And, and the, the, the value, you know, value forward that they're doing on social media is kind of a little bit, you know, just, just, just limp. They're either not, they're not asking or they're not listening. Yeah. You know, um, ask, ask your clients. I was, I just had a guy on my podcast uh, earlier this morning um, talking about, marketing and how so many people spend their time talking about me, 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 rather than the issues and problems. Yep. Right. And, and not really listening to the the customers. It's like, you know, a car, if you talk to an engineer, they say, Oh, it's the best car ever made. The technology we use. If you talk to the safety guy, it's, Oh, it's the safest car on the road. You talk to the art department. Oh, the colors, the lines. Uh -huh. You talk to the customer and it's like, they, you have great cup holders or something, right? Yeah. Unless you talk to, the, your clients to find out exactly what it is they're looking for. They're not going to buy something just because you want to sell it. They're going to buy what they want or what they need. Yeah. And you have to talk to them about that, find out what that is. Yeah. I love that. I love that. That's, that's absolutely key. Um, so yeah, that's, that, that makes sense. Um, what, uh, what three books do you recommend all of your clients read? Uh, E-Myth is one of the first ones. Yep. Um, I think it's, it's a great book. I love Mike McCallowitz, all of his books. Mm -hmm. um, I had Mike on my podcast and stuff. He's, he's just phenomenal, but I love oh, Fix This Next. So funny. Yeah, he's hilarious. Um, uh, I love Fix This Next. I like the, uh, um, he's got a new one, Different, Get Different, mm -hmm. uh, How to Stand Out, right, in what you do. 
Um, so I love those books. Um, Bob Berg. I had Bob Berg on the podcast too. He talks about the go giver. Okay. Yep. You know how to, especially in networking stuff, how to give, and then you will receive, right? Um, make it about adding as much value as you possibly can mm -hmm. rather than taking as much as you can. Um, so yeah, I like those books. I, there's tons of them. I have a, well, in my storage unit at home, I have tons of books. <laughs> and on my Kindle, it's just bursting at the seams with books. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a lifelong learner, so I'm picking up every new book that comes out and trying to read, you know, to keep, keep sharp, see what's out there. Yeah, I love it. I love it, man. Um, let's see, is there, is there anything else that you would like to talk about that we haven't had an opportunity to touch upon yet? I know you've got, you've got a VIP package that you wanted to chat about. Yeah, that's something um, that I've done a couple times for clients and stuff. It's a, this is a hands-on. It's a three to five days at your side, sleeves rolled up, work on your business and stuff. Instead of, hey, here's a six month long program or something like that. Uh -huh. Let's put five days together and just get 10 hours in each day and really crank the stuff out. We'll go through all the bits and pieces that I normally would do with a client. Um, talk about their core values, talk about the uh, SWOT analysis, identify their big goal, and then lay out their their plan for achieving that, including the first 90 days. What are the rocks that they need to need to take care of? Yep. Um, so that's sitting with them and really taking the time to to dive in with it and stuff. Instead of spreading it out, a lot of businesses are like struggling. We want to fix this right now. And that's what this does. It's a VIP. Me and you will sit down and get it taken care of. I love that. Is that, and is that, so you say sitting with them, is that physical or, or Zoom? What does it, that look well, like? Well, I will offer Zoom, but if they say no, I want you to be here and stuff, I'll fly in and we'll yeah. sit side by side and do it. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Because I think it's important. You know, if they're really struggling that much, I, I've had clients before that were on the verge of losing their business yep. just because they didn't understand what they were doing and they were running themselves into the ground. Let's yep. sit down, map out how to do this and get you on the right track. The rest of it we can do uh, via Zoom from wherever. Uh, but let's sit down side by side and really go through this and, and I'll roll sleeves up and do whatever is needed to get it done. That's awesome. And that our, our listeners and viewers can find more information on that at timewithcoach.com. That's, yeah, that's uh, my calendar link. They can okay. schedule, it's a 20 minute discovery call. Talk to me about the, what the problem is and stuff. Let's put a plan together. Awesome. Yeah, www.timewithcoach.com. Awesome. And uh, yeah, for those of you listening on the go, of course, we'll have that link on our show notes page. Um, yeah, man, Harlan, where, where can our listeners and viewers connect with you? Online, on social media, that sort of thing. Yep, I am on LinkedIn quite a bit. So just look for Harlan Hammock on LinkedIn or IB4E Coaching. You can find me that way too. Um, you can also go to my website. It's IB4E-Coaching.com. So it's the letter I, the letter B, the number four, and the letter E-Coaching.com. Love it. And tell us what, what tell us about IB4E Coaching. In school, there... you learn IB4E except after C, right? And if you kept that mnemonic in mind, uh -huh. when it comes to spelling American words anyways, you pretty much could spell 90... 95% of the time you got the word spelled correctly. Uh -huh. Same thing in business. There's certain things you have to do. You have to do them consistently. You have to do them in the right order. Uh -huh. And as long as you do 90, 95% of the time, you'll be successful. I love it. So that's it. I before E. That's a, that's a great little kind of crossover there. I like that. That's, that's very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Um, sweet. Well, so we'll have, uh, we'll have those links, uh, on our show notes page, Harlan Hammock, H A R L A N H A M M A C K at I before E dash coaching.com. Um, Harlan, man, thank you so much for making time to chat with me today. This has been fantastic. Absolutely. No, I appreciate it. Really, really look forward to this conversation and stuff. And I'm willing to check back in with you and see how things are going for you too. I see some guitars in your background. There's, there's, a, I've got a few of them. <laughs> I've got a few. I've got a five or six of them in storage right now. Yeah. So yeah. very cool. Good stuff. Uh, awesome. Um, so yeah, thank you, Harlan Hammock for making time. Mm -hmm. Thank you to our listeners and viewers as always. You guys are amazing and uh, we'll see y'all next time.